Making navigation on your site quick and efficient can easily be done by assigning shortcuts to different pages. Unfortunately, this isn't something we can do natively in Framework. Thankfully though, in today's video, I'm showcasing a component that can help you achieve just that without writing a single line of code. I'm going to show you where to get the component and how to implement it on your site step by step to build this navigation system. My name is Nandi, this is Framework University, and let's get started. So as you can see here on my screen, this is what we're building. We can also click, you know, these items in the navigation. However, you can see in little like tags right next to the names of the, of the menu items that we have shortcuts assigned to these. So if I press down two or three or four on my keyboard, as you can see, I'm navigating between these different pages. I know that you cannot see my short or like, you know, some of my shortcuts are visible here if I press and modify a key. However, if I press down two, three or four, uh, those are not visible, but believe me, I'm actually, you know, pressing these down and that's how I'm navigating between these different pages. So the question is, how do we do something like this in Framer without writing a single line of code? Well, if we jump into Framer, you can see that, you know, the native way of, you know, assigning links to different buttons, for example, to these menu items here as well, is by selecting an element and on the top right, we can click link and we can just link to a different, you know, page on our website. And if we click that, we're going to go to that specific page. However, you know, this is not really happening when we press down a key. So how do we do that? Well, we can simply use a Framer University component for this. So I'm just going to go to Framer.University slash resources. Here you can find a search bar in the top right. You can just write shortcuts and there you go. Shortcut component for Framer. Top right, you can copy the component and you're going to just paste it into uh, your website. However, uh, it's really important to not just paste it here within the desktop breakpoint um, because basically the shortcuts will only be added to the page where this component is on. So for example, if we have the shortcuts component on the home page and we create the shortcuts here, we define them on the right panel, it's only added to the desktop. So, you know, we have to kind of add it to a an element that is repeating on all of our pages where we want the shortcuts. If you think about it, it is going to be the navigation component. That's where we're gonna paste this component in. So first of all, let's quickly see the structure of this navigation that I have here. Of course, it's really simple and clean. These are just a few items right next to each other, but I wanna also show you the structure. So you can see that each item is just a simple stack. We have a text layer within, and then another stack on the right to it, which has a little like, you know, text in it as well. This is where we actually show the shortcut uh, for this specific item. So we can either have one here or R or, you know, any other key that you are triggering the, um, you know, the page with. So in this case, it's one. And basically what we do is we turn this, you know, menu item into a component. So right click, create component, and we create this. And within, we just set the home text content to a variable. This is going to be the title. And on the right, we also create a content variable for this little tag. So we can you know, customize the title and the shortcut for these different menu items individually on the canvas. What we also shouldn't forget is that despite these menu items working on, you know, pressing down different keys, we can still click them. So these should also have links attached to them. So on the top right, we're going to add the link and create a variable for that as well. Again, creating these variables is really important because then here, if I duplicate this component and have multiple of them, I can just go into the right panel and switch it to, let's say work and have a different shortcut for this one. And one thing I remember now is that I also have to create two variants for each menu item. This one will be the active state and another variant will be inactive. So here on the inactive state, I can just drop the transparency of the background. So it can be 15%. Uh, so it's not as you know highlighted as the active state. And then this little tag can be uh, you know white transparent instead of black transparent. So now that we have this, again, we can duplicate these components, have active and inactive variants set on the right panel, as well as different links, title and shortcut 
So with these components, we can assemble our whole media navigation. We can wrap these individual menu items in a shortcut navigation stack. Uh, you know, between we have, you know, two pixel gap. And then what we can do is we can turn this whole shortcut navigation into a component. So I'm going to just press option component K on my keyboard and create the component. Here I will delete all of these variants because we only need one and then of course I'm going to create new variants for all of the different pages. So this is going to be home and then this is going to be work where I'm selecting the work and setting that to active and the home is going to be inactive. So basically I just do this for all of the pages. This is going to be about here about is set to active and this is inactive and then the last one will be contact where contact is active and the about is inactive. So once we have this component set up uh, with all of its variants, we can go back to our home where we're gonna you know, set the home variant of the navigation component. Then on the work page, we are you know, using the same navigation component, but we are using it on the work variant. And we're just you know, setting different variants for each of these pages. So all of them display the right active menu item. You might actually notice that I have this phone version of the component here with this little toggle. I'm going to talk about this briefly at the end of this video. So now that we have this set up, we can, you know, click this to navigate between different pages, but the shortcut is not really working. I'm pressing down keys, but it's not really there. So what I have to do again is go within the component and paste the shortcut component here. So I'm going to go again to Framer University, copy the component, and paste it here. So I'm pressing Command V, and it is actually right here, pasted within this component. We cannot really see it because it's an invisible component. You can see it's right here, actually. It's like a tiny little dot. Um, the great thing is that it's invisible. It just adds the functionality to our site. However, it can still push you know, elements around. So for example, now that it's relative, you can see as I'm re uh, like reordering it with the other elements, it's slightly pushing uh, the other content away. To you know, solve this little problem, we can just set the shortcuts component from relative position to absolute position. So now it's completely, uh, you know, not part of the flow of the stack. So yeah, it's perfect. So now what we have to do is just select the shortcut component, and then on the right we have these shortcuts. So we just click this. And this is where we're going to add all of the shortcuts that we have within the navigation. It's really important that do not add like multiple shortcut components and add different pages uh, like that, because you can just get away with one shortcut component and then you can just add all of your links right here. So the first link is going to be on key one. We're linking to home page and then it is going to be not in a new tab. Then the second one will be two, which is taking us to work. And then we're also adding three. It takes us to about. And then the last one is just added here. Four takes us to contact. Perfect. And I think that's basically it. As you can see, we have all of the shortcuts added here. We can, by the way, also use combinations. So if we write plus, I don't know, comment plus one, uh, then it's going to be working when we press command one. Yeah, so, so yeah, but we're going to just have simply one. And if we check this now, it should work. If I'm pressing, yeah, the keys on my keyboard, I can move between these pages really, really fast. And it's really cool. And, you know, now that we have this shortcut component within the navigation component, we're making sure that the shortcut component is actually added to all of these pages. So yeah, it works everywhere because if you would have, let's say the work page, we move to the work page and the shortcut component is not is existing here on this specific page, it wouldn't work here. I would press down four and it just wouldn't go there. Okay, so now let's briefly talk about how did I do this mobile optimization for this component? Because you can see it just has this phone toggle that I can click and it just gets a little bit smaller, removing the tags. Why do we remove the tags on phone? Well, because on phone we're not really using shortcuts, so it doesn't really make sense to showcase them there. So let me show you how to do this really easily. 
So basically the trick is within the menu item component. So if I double click into the shortcut navigation and then double click into the menu item component, you can see we have the two variants that we also defined. Here it also has a little hover state where the transparency of the background increases slightly, nothing crazy. Uh, but what's extra here is that we create a toggle for displaying this tag or not displaying the tag. So the way we do that is by selecting the tag on the primary variant and on the right panel, we can go to visible. You know, this is where we can actually toggle it. But we want to make sure that, you know, I'm toggling this for each instance individually and not here within the component. So what we do is we click this visible property and then set a variable and uh, actually not set a variable, we create a variable, a new variable that is going to be called phone. So if this phone variable, sorry, I just want to uh, showcase it for you. So if this is set to no, you can see it's not visible. If it's set to yes, it's visible. There is an extra little issue here. Uh, and that's the fact that we set up the padding on this component uh, in a really specific way. When this tag is here, it makes sense to have a little bit less padding on the right, just to make sure that it is equal to the top padding. So we have equal spacing around this tag. However, when it's set to no and we're not you know, showcasing the tag, it doesn't look equal uh, in it right here. So what we have to do is we have to make sure that we add a condition to the padding value. So we select the primary on the right padding. We click this little um, like title here, and then we set variable phone and we convert it. So when phone is yes, that basically means that on the left, we have to have seven padding. And on the right, we also have to have seven, right? So now you can see that when the phone is set to yes, we have equal padding on the left and on the right. And now I just noticed that we are setting the tag condition for the visibility wrong. So the way we should set it up is, is in a way that when phone is set to yes, we are not displaying the tag, right? And when it's set to no, we are displaying the tag because you know if we are not on phone, we are on desktop, we wanna shoot a tag because we have shortcuts on desktop. So how do we do that? Well. It's a really simple fix. We just have to click here, remove the phone um, variable first of all, then click here again, set variable, and we're gonna set it to not phone, right? So now when it's set to yes, it's not there. When it's set to no, it's there. So now it is perfect. We can go back to the padding value of the primary. And when set to no, we can specify seven on the left and four on the right. Perfect. So now when we are switching between these two options, we're not only changing the visibility of the tag, but also changing the padding to make sure that in both states, it looks great. Now, all you have to do is to go back uh, one level to the shortcut navigation component. And on here, select all of these menu item components within the primary variant. And on the right, just click the phone property here and then create a variable for that. So now with this one toggle here on the shortcut navigation component, we can toggle all of the menu item tags. And that's basically what we need. So when we go here, we move to the phone breakpoint of the website, select the navigation. And on the right, we just toggle phone to yes. So all of those tags disappear. So again, just to see what we created, we have this website with the navigation that works on pressing down these shortcuts. And then if we resize our window and go into a phone uh, in a breakpoint, and you can just click or tap on these menu items to navigate on our website. So yeah, basically that's it for this video. If you have any questions about this component or basically anything related to Framer, make sure to drop them in the comment section. And yeah, also check out Framework University for cool resources, remixes, components, and lessons like this. If you are a big Framer user or you're just getting started, I think it is going to be a great resource for you. So yeah, that's it for this video. Make sure to like it, subscribe for more, and I'm gonna see you in the next one.